What's going on guys? My name is Ulogic and welcome back to yet another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Monstera adenosiae. Now the Monstera adenosiae is a close relative of the Monstera deliciosa which is an extremely popular house plant today. And I'm just going to give you guys some care tips for this plant. I'm going to show you guys the dry terrarium setup that I have for it. And then we're going to go over some pros and cons that I've noticed with this terrarium setup that I've provided the Monstera adenosiae with. If this plant looks familiar on my channel, it is because it is the same plant that I picked up in my plant haul video. So if you're interested in seeing that from a few months back, be sure to look in the description. Link will be there. The Monstera adenosiae is generally going to follow the same requirements as the Monstera deliciosa. Now when it comes to watering, you're generally going to want to be more moderate with the watering on this plant. Some people recommend letting it dry out, but I'm under the impression that letting it dry out for too long will actually damage the plant, especially from my experience. So what I'll generally recommend is to let it dry out a little bit, potentially the first like inch or two of the soil. However, uh, the very bottom of the soil should stay at least a little bit damp. Not soggy, but damp, that is important. It's very important to note that natively, the Monstera family generally inhabits humid, more tropical, like environments and ecosystems and then when it comes to sunlight this plant is going to enjoy moderate so like medium to bright and direct sunlight it has been seen growing in more low light conditions however they generally don't thrive for too long bright indirect light is the way to go so maybe if you have it near a window put a nice sheer curtain to prevent the sun rays from just toasting this plant completely. So when it comes to care tips, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Let's talk a little bit about the dry terrarium setup that I have going on. So I got this dry terrarium uh, for a pretty good deal. It was about like four or five dollars for the whole set. So that's the stand and the glass included. Now let's get the bad out of the way. One of the things that I find very difficult about this dry terrarium setup is just knowing when to water it. Of course, because it's in an enclosed situation you're going to be watering it less often however what i do recommend for you to do is not to get too comfortable with not watering the plant for an extended period of time because what ends up happening is that the water evaporates from the soil and goes to the top of the jar instead now this may seem like a good idea right like one may think that the that the water that's condensing at the top of the glass is just gonna fall right back in but what i think this is is a bit of a misconception about how terrariums work the water starts losing some of the qualities and properties that are very beneficial to the plant and you start to get a bit of like i want to say stagnant water which is never good for the plant and it can actually lead to root rot especially considering that the plant isn't getting access to a passageway for the water to just evaporate out of the environment and what i end up doing is that every few days or so I let it go without the jar on top for about like maybe like one or two days just to make sure that the plant is receiving a fresh amount of air and that everything is going good and well. Now onto the good about this jar terrarium. Now one of the things that I really enjoy about it is of course the closed system. It's very interesting to see the Monstera operate isolated. I have been noticing some shoots growing. It hasn't been as rapid as I expected for it to be. However, the fact that I am noticing these shoots is giving me hope and is indicating to me that I'm not doing things entirely wrong, which is always a plus. Obviously, with the closed jar terrarium comes less watering, which is always good. I'm somebody who I like to be less hands-on with my plants. I'm a bit more relaxed with it. I don't have to be as hands-on with it, which is always cool. As for the Monstera adenosiae guys, this is pretty much it. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about it or if you have any questions regarding the actual plant. Be sure to link them down in the comments below. I will answer them all. But aside from that, that is it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure that you leave a thumbs up, comment down below, and if you're not subscribed already, make sure that you do so. Cool, that is it. Until next time, peace.